everyone, welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So, in this episode, quite excited, um, I will be discussing um, the 1993 science fiction movie Jurassic Park, as directed by Steven Spielberg. So, starting my um, Jurassic Park come world season, um, where all five films will be reviewed. So, I mean, now... Steven Spielberg is one of those directors that kind of loves to play out his childhood fantasies um, and, and dreams onto film. And this film was pretty much, at the time, the pinnacle of that. You know, I, I mean, I'm probably kind of pre-programmed to like Steven Spielberg's kind of films. Um, but I don't love everything he's done. Um, just most of it. Jurassic Park, however, I'll say right at the very start of this review, I absolutely love this movie um, and have done ever since um, I was a child myself. The movie is loosely based on the best-selling 1990 novel of the same name by Michael Crichton. Now I say loosely um, as it's one of those very rare occasions that I have actually read the book very very long time ago um, when I myself kind of got caught up in hysteria that accompanied this movie um, what I can remember is, is that the movie differs from the book in a number of ways. I just can't remember what ways. Um, so I know that's not very helpful in a review, but if of course any of you can assist uh, with this, I'd be happy to know your thoughts in the comments below. Absolutely. So um, please do. The premise of this movie is, is actually quite simple. Um, it asks the question, what would happen if we could bring back the dinosaurs into our world uh, using genetic cloning and in this movie they are indeed uh, brought back for our enjoyment in the form of an amusement park come zoo, um, a Jurassic Park if you will, which is the brainchild of John Hammond as played by Richard Attenborough. Following an accident at the park, um, as things are kind of being installed, um, the investors insist on some outside opinions. Um, and so then we join paleontologist, get these right, paleontologist Dr. Alan Grant, um, as played by Sam Neill, paleobotanist um, Dr. Ellie Sattler, as played by Laura Dern, mathematician and chaos theorist Dr. Ian Malcolm, as played by Jeff Goldblum, and the investor's lawyer, uh, Donald Gennario, as played by Martin Ferrero, um, as they are recruited to inspect the park for the very first time. They are joined by the park's tag audience, uh, Hammond's grandchildren, Lex and Tim Murphy, as played by Ariana Richards and Joseph Mazzello, respectively. However, Everything goes a little pear-shaped when a cooperate, uh, a co corporate, no, corporate spy, Dennis Nedry, as played by Wayne Knight, shuts down the park's security systems in order to steal the dinosaur's embryos for a competitor. Absolute carnage then ensues as the dinosaurs break free and run rampant through the park. All the humans can do is basically get out of their way. The film also features Samuel L. Jackson um, as Ray Arnold, one of the park's computer engineers, and Bob Peck as Robert Muldoon, the park's warden. Um, so quite a, a star-studded cast. So this film pretty much defined a generation and redefined what we came to expect from our summer blockbusters. It was a creature feature like nothing else that had seen before in terms of scale, special effects, and attention to detail, with not only the creatures themselves, but some expertly crafted storytelling, the characters, and just some simply awe-inspiring scenes that actually make this movie from start to finish. The hype around this movie, uh, when it was first released, was, was also something like I had never seen before. You couldn't turn a corner um, without seeing promotional material for the film, or bump into somebody without coming around to the movie as a topic for discussion. It was simply everywhere. Thankfully, um, it more than paid off. Um, and unlike other films that have been pushed to the brink um, of completely saturating the market, this movie more than lived up to it. Now, 
when this movie first came out, the, the special effects in the movie were absolutely at the top of the game. In fact, this film pretty much changed what we would come to expect from a blockbuster movie. More and more films are, of course, now made by pushing boundaries of the expected and accepted norm, generating new technology and filming techniques to overcome challenges in order to bring us movies at the absolute forefront of the cutting edge of filmmaking. In order to achieve the special effects in Jurassic Park, new ways of producing visual effects, both physical and CGI, had to be developed, pushing what could be done at the time and not stopping until the filmmakers achieved their desired result. I mean, goodness knows how many times I have watched this movie um, over the years, but this was the first time, I'm going to admit, I tried to watch it with a more critical eye, um, but, but loosely, um, too. I mean, of, of course, for, for undertaking this review. Now, what I would say is that although the CGI special effects um, were fantastic for the time, I did think that perhaps at times they hadn't held up too well. For me, the initial scene where we are introduced to the dinosaurs in the big open plan area and the Brachiosaurus walks by, you can tell it's CGI. Um, the feet just weren't quite touching the ground. Um, but what I would say in an account argument to this is that the physical animatronic effects still looked absolutely amazing for its time. So, so lifelike. What you do have to admire, especially when compared to some of the movies made today, is as spectacular as some of them are, this film did not resort to making everything so dark you had to squint to see any of the action, or shake the camera so fast you, you could only make certain features out of the haze which formed. Even the darkest scenes uh, with the T-Rex, which, which mostly happen at night, mostly, are, are clear enough to see the exquisite detail of that magnificent carnivore. You can really tell that Spielberg really wanted the audience to see and feel these creatures as though you were act as, as though they were actually alive in our world today. And in this, I think he certainly accomplished that mission. You know, this is just some simply stunning cinematography in that respect. So, of course, I mean, given the premise of the film, um, the show stealers are, of course, the dinosaurs uh, themselves by a long shot, uh, you know, especially the predators, which take centre stage as the main kind of antagonists, if you like, mainly in, in this first outing, uh, this being the T-Rex and the Velociraptors. In fact, this film had so much impact um, that not only did people go wild for the movie, it kick-started a whole new generation into a craze with all things dinosaurs. The humans in the movie, um, well, they're actually okay. Um, they do a pretty decent job, to be fair, uh, to bring us characters that might be a little corny, cheesy, a little bit over the top at times, but hey, they've just seen dinosaurs for the first time. All the actors actually play their characters well, um, in a real kind of involved and fun way. Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, they do pretty much play their characters like they do most of the time in their movies, but that actually works in favour for this film, as their personalities really do shine through and, and fit the tone of the movie very well. As though the, the kind of the roles were actually written for them um, and not vice versa. The pacing in the movie is, is quite good. It does tredge a little at the beginning, but I do think it is required in this one in order to introduce us to the basis for the park and the origins of the dinosaurs. And to be fair, if it's the first time you've watched the film, you, you'll, you will be sat there in awe. Um, only when you've seen this bit a few times, um, all you're really wanting for thereafter is, is the dino action to start. The film is in itself a very fun roller coaster ride of thrills and spills, absolutely. Once, of course, we have been introduced to the dinosaurs. We then move swiftly from one peril to the next once we are. Finally, I cannot do Jurassic Park, uh, well, I can't do a Jurassic Park review any justice without mentioning the film score. Not at all. So the music in this movie was composed by none other than John Williams. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, 
He has brought us such iconic themes such as those for Star Wars, E.T., um, Indiana Jones, and that, that's just to name a few. And boy, you know, what an absolutely captivating and spellbinding soundtrack this actually is. Um, it's right up there uh, with one of his best, in, in my opinion. As sad as I am, having been part of an orchestra in my youth, I did used to stand there conducting to an empty room with this soundtrack on, on my dad's sound system. Um, full blast. Um, and I still do, occasionally. I wished we, we played music like this in the orchestra and I might have kept it up. John Williams, as, as you know, he created nothing short of a masterpiece theme for this film. The main element of which is instantly recognisable as being Jurassic Park and is expertly transformed and reworked throughout the movie to convey a whole range of emotions and feelings. So yes, um, overall, for me, a simply superb film with some excellent cinematography and a, and a soundtrack to match, absolutely. It is indeed a film that influenced a generation and into a new love of all things dinosaurs. And indeed, when it was released, um, and indeed for some time after, um, well, until it was kind of knocked off the perch by James Cameron's Titanic in 1997, was the highest grossing film ever. So that speaks volumes. And not forgetting one simply awesome final sequence um, and one true iconic pattern shot of the formidable T-Rex that I will never, ever forget. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, more trailer reactions and more other movie related content. But most of all, we've loved having you. Thank you for watching. Um, please do come back to SciFest Movie Talk. Um, absolutely. Um, love to have you back. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.